G'day fellas. Today I'm going to be bringing you a commentary for the Sweden civilization. This is a team game. I'm playing with a, a good friend of mine. He's a little bit rusty, so you'll have to be patient with him. Uh, so he's using the tag I am grunting. I'm not sure if you've heard of I am grunt, but he's an old legend uh, from the Age of Empires 3 original game. Uh, so he's just having a, a little bit of a joke at that. He isn't actually I am grunt. He, he's a fellow Australian. Uh, so in, in this game, He's playing Russia and I'm playing Sweden. Uh, so we're on voice communications, which is a really, really important thing uh, when you're playing any team game. If you're playing a team game, you need to be communicating uh, with your teammate and you need to have them on voice comms because if you're using just uh, you know typing and, and text, it's just not gonna cut it for a game like this. It's, it's so fast paced, you need to be able to react. So here you see I'm, I'm choosing my deck. So you can see that this is a, uh, we're on the map Saguenay. So Saguenay is a, a water-based map. So with the deck that I've chosen, I give myself the option to go to water. I also uh, give myself the option to do what I want to do on land. And so what I want to do on land is I, ideally my build order here is going to be three settlers, blueberries uh, into ironworks, then 700 wood, and then I'm going to be upgrading my units. So in this game, because my teammate is Russian, He's going to be building the infantry mass. I'm going to be building the cavalry mass. So the plan is that he'll go a combination of strelets and muskets, and I'll just be going complete hussar. And then once I age up, I'll be mixing in some hacker pellet as well. There's a couple different things with this build order. So you can see I've just picked up a 40 wood treasure. So I've decided to gather the rest of my crates. Uh, and so I'm going to get that, get that second torp down so I can age up at that little bit quicker. Now, with, with uh, the Swedish, they're a little bit slow if you don't take three settlers. So what you want to do is you want to try and find an XP treasure. Now, I've been really fortunate on Saguenay. Uh, Saguenay's got a lot of really good treasures and they're close to your base, so you don't have to move too much. I found a 130 XP treasure just to the north there. Now, that's going to enable me to pick up my three settlers here as they come in, and it's going to enable me to get blueberries very soon after. So if I didn't do this, it would mean that I'd have to be taking a trade post. And if I take a trade post, it's going to significantly delay my boom, and it's going to affect how many units I can get out. So we see I'm, I'm moving into position. Uh, I've used my crack shot on the previous treasure, so we've just got to wait for it. And in the meantime, I'm just doing some scouting. So what I'm going to do before my crack shot completely uh, comes back up, I'm going to pull these uh, the bears. I'm going to aggro them. I'm going to take them to the ring. Now, as the bear moves around, I'm going to follow him. The trick here is that it, it, your, your shot, essentially the, the way that your shot works is that the bear is going to run in the direction that you shoot it. Ideally, you want to keep him in the circle. You don't want him to be resetting. And he's going to reset if you shoot him at, a, at, a, at an angle. So you need to follow the bear around to the edge of the circle and then shoot. And then once I've taken a shot at the bear, so I'm, I'm then going to use my crack shot on the second bear. And this way I can minimize the amount of time that I spend uh, working towards that treasure so I can continue getting out there and exploring because every second makes the difference. Uh, you can also see I, I just deleted a, a sheep in between my two torps. So the torps are going to gather that. That's going to give me additional food so that I can age up. Um, and I've got a second sheep just in the waiting for once that first sheep has been killed or has been fully gathered. In the meantime, so we're up against the Japanese uh, and they are going to be shrining our hunts. So I'm making an effort to get my hunts in early. So, and now you see the blueberries coming in and I'm aging up with the logistician. Now, the lo logistician is just my absolute favorite for Sweden. In, in every single circumstance, I really try and take the logistician. And the reason why is he just brings so much power to the Swedish age too. Uh, if you're going cavalry, he allows you to get that cavalry cuirass upgrade. If you're going infantry, then there's just you've got military drummer, which increases the speed of your uh, it increases the speed of your Carolians, and you've got you're just absolutely lightning fast. I think it's 5.87 speed Carolians, uh, and they, it all, you also have the the melee upgrade, which in increases their attack from 20 to 24. So 20 percent. That's a huge buff. Uh, so here you can see I begin moving out settlers to build my torps. Now, because I've already got my blueberries card in, I don't have to wait with these ones. Um, and that, that, that's really strong. So I'm checking out the Spain deck here. I can see that he's got a cavalry-based deck. And I've put my explorer into melee. So I've used the hotkeys, and I've just simply 
tapped it into melee. And the reason why is because I want to follow this explorer. I don't want to let him get any extra shrines down. If I'm on him, he's not going to be able to put as many shrines down as he likes. So there you can see he's poofed back to base and my explorer is going to going to so that it's a, it's a little bit of a bug but he's he's going to go and continue following him wherever he may go uh so he'll instantly uh go and meet that that explorer wherever he he comes um so you can see in the transition i'm, I'm just focusing completely on wood and i'm putting up torps i'm sending out my villagers to to coin mines and I'm making sure I've got my torps up here in my wagons. So I'm going to be sending my wagon to a forward stable. Now, I've aged up quite early for the logistician. So I'm not too fussed about the, the travel time that's going to happen here. Typically, you would be sending forward vills. And then as soon as you age up, you'd be dropping down that wagon. But because of the wagon builds with such speed, I'm satisfied that I'm not going to be losing out too much. And in the meantime, I'm just going to keep putting up torps. The first card I'm going to ship in the second age is, is Ironworks. This is going to enable my economy to get into overdrive really quickly. A lot of people will be shipping 700 wood as their first card, but you can see because we didn't need to put up that trade post because we got that XP treasure, we don't have to really worry about that. So there you can see my um, my explorer has found his, uh, his explorer and he's doing his thing and he's making him return back to base, which is what we want. Uh, so... My uh, my allies are a little bit slow, so normally with a rush and rush, uh, you want to be hitting them about 510, so he, he's coming in about 530, uh, but the map is significantly bigger, which which is why that's that's happening. Uh, so now that we've got our stable down, I've, I've transferred a whole bunch of settlers off wood, and I put them onto food, because I've got heaps of population space, and the torps that I've got already are going to provide me the gold income to be building my cavalry. So as you can see, we've got absolutely nobody on coin, yet yeah, I'm still able to get out that first batch of cav, that's five. Um, and the, the coin economy that I, I've got here is just absolutely monstrous. And as we continue to add torps, our food economy and our coin economy is going to just absolutely skyrocket. And you'll be, you'll be pushed into a point where you'll be wondering, what, what am I going to do with all these resources? But that's something that we'll look at a little bit further in the game. So one of the things I'm, I'm communicating with my ally here is that we don't want to commit. At the moment, we don't want to commit. So they've put buildings up for us to kill. So what we want to do is we want to mass. So I've gone for an economic build. I'm focusing on economy. I'm going to be shipping unit upgrades soon. And essentially, we want to wait for those to come in. We don't want to fight before then. Because if we allow the enemy to beat us in an early fight, then we're going to be at a disadvantage. So there you can see I'm deleting that, that sheep again. Uh, and so I'm, I'm very careful not to lose any units. All, all we're really doing here is, is just working towards our mass so don't feel like you need to pressure the enemy so the enemy right now they wouldn't they wouldn't really be feeling any pressure but that's okay because we're, we're not aiming to to rush what we're aiming to do is gain map control which is what we're doing you can see this uh there's cavalry raids going on down towards that uh that trading post down the bottom on the mini map um and you know we're we're maintaining map control and presence by doing this we're, we're killing shrines off so that we're able to hunt uh, and we're continuing adding towards our economy. So you can see the torps are going up. Uh, and you, so it's important when you're monitoring your economy to, to see how it balances. So I've, I've just missed, missed a batch of four. I think that's the second batch of four I've gotten out just uh, by, by a tiny little margin. And because I've shipped this 700 wood, I've, I've actually got quite a high amount of wood. Now, that's not something that you need to worry about. You don't need to slam down a whole bunch of torps. What, what's important is that you get your torps down in good positions because each one of these torps is worth about two villages. So here I'm throwing up which cards I'm going to send. So I, I throw up the... Or I, I determine that the best card is going to be the uh, the cav attack. Uh, and we catch a couple couple cav going for a raid here. In, in the meantime, uh, you can see the economy, you know, where I'm able to be keeping up batches of four and five cav consistently and we're working towards that magic 200 population with the torps. That's once we hit that 200 pop, that's when we're really going to be going monstrous. So it's at eight minutes, 20 seconds. I'm putting up a second stable and you might think that's a little bit early, but I assure you the, the Swedish economy is about to go boom. So we're, we're putting down these tops. We're finalizing that. And then once we've got this second stable up, we're expect, I'll, I'll expect probably between eight and 10 uh, batches will, will be coming out nonstop. Uh, so once again, I'm, I'm uh, asking my, my Russian ally here, just you know, not to engage. We don't want to engage. We we spot that they're double cav, uh, 
Um, and all, all we're trying to do, or all I'm trying to do with my, my cavalry is just convince them not to engage. I'm bringing them up. I, I don't want to fight. At this point, I'm I'm sending infantry hit points card, and then I decide it's probably better that I send cavalry hit points card because my mass is just it's so big at this point. Uh, and I, I've got 15 villagers on on wood, which is a little bit too much. Uh, so I think I might, uh, yeah, I think I pick them up and and realize because I've I've got that second stable up. What I want to be doing is I want to be moving them all over to food, and, and that's what I do. So I think I'm looking for a hunt here. Uh, if, if you if your eyes were quick, you would have actually seen that uh, the land on under that hunt just changed, and uh, the enemy explorer has been just put down a shrine there. It's it's important when you're playing against the Japanese that you are very cognizant of where their explorer's location is. Uh, so as, as we grow closer to that 200 uh, population um, limit, I, I'm dropping down the market. I'm going to be getting those market upgrades. Uh, and that's going to enable me to further push my economy ahead. There's a couple of different options that you can have, uh, or that, that you do have. So you can see my allies going for a bit of a sea boom here. Uh, we've got schooners in our deck, so if we do want to be doing that, we can. Now, because I've got settlers on the hunt where he's got shrines, and I know that they're double cav, my first instinct, they're going to be sending cavalry to my villages. They can see my villages. They know that they're there. They know where my cav is. They can see it burning down. So what do I do? I rally my cavalry from the stables directly to my, my hunts. And I'm aiming to clear that so he doesn't have line of sight there anymore. And that's going to deter him from doing any potential raids. Now you can see I've got the infantry hit points card coming in for my teammate. This is going to give him a significant boost. So essentially when it comes to team fighting, all we're going to want to do is... I'm going to want to soak everything. I want all of his infantry to stay alive. That's the key, because his infantry is what's going to be doing the majority of the damage. I'm going to just be soaking for him. So I've got uh, I've got 400 health on my Hussars, so that means that I've got the Cavalry Karas upgrade from the Arsenal. That's the Age 2 Arsenal from Swedish with the Logistician. Really, really important in team games. And I've got the Cavalry HP card from the Home City. Uh, and I've got an absolute uh, huge amount of idols at the moment. All right, there we go. Let's fix that up. So I, we see these units move forward here, and I, I, I think, oh, well, it's a bit of a natural choke point. Probably best not to fight it. Um, and we, we continue working towards the mass, and I see someone's hit the Fortress Age. We're not sure who it is. It's the Japanese. Okay, and so because he's hit the Fortress Age at this point, it's go time. Even though I don't have all my cavalry here, right now I've got about 15 to 20 cavalry that's out. But that doesn't matter because his army is right here and he's going to be having 20% upgrades coming soon any moment. And so we need to make sure his army is dead. So here I am rallying my additional cavalry back. You can see the economy that we've got. I've got 10 hussars in queue right now and, I've and I'm still making cash. So I'm not microing this at all. All I'm doing is preventing the enemy cavalry from coming in on top of on top of the uh the muskets i want it to stay alive and at, now this doesn't look like it's going well but that then comes the reinforcing cavalry you can see the swedish economy is so big that even though i just lost 30 hussars i've got another 30 hussars coming right behind it it gets to the point where there's just so many hussars that the enemy just simply can't deal with it so here you can see, look, these hussars just... I've got, I've got 25 selected at the moment. I just lost 30, I got another 25. That's how big this Swedish team game economy is. I'm satisfied at this point in team game, Sweden is just overpowered. There's no way that, uh, that people are really able to keep up with the Swedish economy. Uh, and there you can see the, uh, the Spanish player has gone out. Uh, and shortly after, we're going to be seeing uh, the, the Japanese player go out as well. Um, and so, you know, just really reiterating the point when it comes to the Swedish economy it's all about getting those torps up as soon as possible and still being able to maintain unit production that's really the key uh, to, to playing the, the Swedes in the team games so just recapping the game the card order is three settlers blueberries and then you're going to be sending your Engelberg ironworks you're going to be sending you 700 wood then you're going to be following that up with you from there you can go a different route so if you wanted to go on water you could go 600 wood for me, I, I love the cav upgrades. I think it's really, really important that you get those cav upgrades in nice and early. That way, when, when you, you hit that fight, you're going to have them and, and you're good to go. You, you got maximum efficiency in the second age. And, uh, you know, from there, the deck that I've chosen for this map really enables me a lot of flexibility. 
with the economy with my economy and how strong it is you could see I, I had clicked up at the end i've still got enough resources to be putting out batches and batches of hussars so i could be dropping down a third stable or a fourth stable i could be putting down a heap of docks and even further pushing my economy uh but realistically uh normally what i would be doing in in that position if if we hadn't won that team fight or if we we'd gone even is i'd be clicking up i'd be maintaining hussar production slightly and i'd be going for the fourth age and I'd be taking my enemy by surprise. So normally I'd be looking to hit that uh, between the 15 and 16 minute mark. Uh, normally when I'm aging up, I'd be taking the covered wagon because with Sweden, your torps are going to be running out of coin mines normally around the 17, 18 minute mark. And the covered wagon is going to enable you to have pick up 500 wood for free. You're going to get that town center down. And then from there, you're going to be able to really set up your economy. So I hope that you've enjoyed this game. I hope you picked up a thing or two about uh, the Swedish team game build order that I use. And if you've got any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope that you've enjoyed it.